Don't rush something that you want to last forever. It takes time to build proper foundations, relationships, careers, your mental health. Things take time and it's okay not to have it all figured out just yet. And I'm assuming that you're watching this video because you've had enough of things like anxiety and that's the perfect place to be. Joey. Before we begin, I'd like to say that I've wanted to make this video for a long time. This approach took me years to find and it comes from a place of love and understanding. I personally have lived most of my life shattered by anxiety and I'm here to tell you that there is no need to endure. You can learn to manage anxiety and this approach may be the relief you're looking for. I've tried many different things to help and this one has been the most life-changing. And I really wish someone had explained this to me years ago. Instead, I was told that there was nothing really that could be done. I would only be able to manage it with medication and it was kind of like a wiring issue in my brain. As a result, I never even bothered to try and tend to it and spent many years living through this lens, kind of watching my body and mind be shaped by anxious thoughts. And I'm here to tell you that you can change. So, now that we've got to know each other a little better, let me explain my approach. It's broken up into two steps, and I could run through everything you need to know, but it's important that step one is fully understood. Otherwise, you'll most likely end up reviewing hundreds of different quick fixes, and trust me, there really isn't one. This video is dedicated to step one, and then you'll feel way more empowered by the framework I'll explain in the next video. There is no quick way out, but when you get it, the ship will be turned and you'll begin the journey to calmer waters. So, this morning I woke up and feeling a little bit sticky in my thoughts, just from a bit of a rough sleep. We had some baboons barking at four in the morning and I went to go check to see whether all the doors and windows were locked because sometimes they just bust in and just tear the place apart. And it's crazy that sitting in the cold water for three minutes just clears it up entirely and I just feel like I've had a complete reset. This shop is the most dangerous shop in Cape Town. I come out of that place with far less money than when I went in there. And I don't go there very often. And when I do, it's incredible. So for the far, for the fast, so for the past few months, and maybe even longer, Cape Town hasn't had any film. And they eventually got shipment in of semi-affordable film. And I'm super excited. So I've got this camera here. This is, I'm gonna geek out for a second here, but this is my favorite camera I own. It is the EOS 1V, and it's the last line of fully automatic professional film cameras. But the thing with this camera is, other than the fact that I generally can't use like manual focus, film cameras because of my stigmatism in my eye, which is not a great thing to advertise as a photographer. But this thing is fully automatic and it takes the most beautiful film pictures and the wildest shutter sound. Just listen to this. How cool. So as a continuation for The Artist Way, I'm gonna shoot a roll of film and share it on the channel. And I feel like it's a good step because it's really, 
there really is no hiding with film. You shoot it and there's only so much you can do to it and there is definitely some growth in that I think for the creative process. But as a continuation for the theme of this video, I will say that even if you don't struggle with anxiety yourself, you most likely do know someone who does. And understanding it is super useful because it then allows you to know how to be there for them. And I find even just learning about it uncomfortable. But in my opinion, it is a necessary step because understanding it is the first step to managing it. Also, what are your what are your thoughts on this? So, what are your thoughts on this turtle neck? I uh, I stole this from my dad, and I never thought I'd like them, but I, I I'm into it. It makes me feel like Steve Jobs. <laughs> So what I found best, especially with dealing with anxiety, is just to keep things simple. And at its core, anxiety is the body's normal psychological response to the perception of danger. And this response starts with the brain's region involved with processing fear. So basically, when your brain perceives danger, it stimulates your sympathetic nervous system, which is basically your fight or flight response. And that in turn then releases adrenaline into your body. And it's that adrenaline in your body that gives you that really uncomfortable, anxious feel. So basically, there is nothing wrong with you if you experience anxiety. It's just the body's natural and primal response to perceived danger. So now that we understand what's happening, let's look at why. Now, the most interesting thing for me, which completely changed my relationship to anxiety, is the brain or your thoughts and its link to the body. So your brain or your thoughts trigger the same physiological response in your body as it would if it was happening in real life. Now this changed everything for me because it made me realize the power of one's thoughts and its effect on the body. And the thing with the mind is that it's actually largely repetitive and negative and you'll start to notice as you turn your attention inwards and left unwatched, you are completely at the mercy of your own mind. Now, you may be thinking, it's impossible to control your thoughts. And in a sense, you're right, but we're not actually trying to control one's thoughts. We're just merely trying to break the resonance or that emotional, physical sting that you feel when you think something anxiety provoking. Something in your life is causing this anxious response and then it is felt as this ping or this anxious resonance in your body. And that is that survival instinct. And with this framework, we're gonna learn how to firstly recognize, slow down and dissolve that ping in our body. Firstly, there is nothing wrong with you. You're not broken, you're not wired incorrectly. It's just a natural response to perceived danger. And in fact, if we were living in a predator-prey environment, we probably survive. The whole idea is for us to avoid danger and we wouldn't be very comfortable, I'm assuming, but we'd survive. And the idea is that we're gonna just become more aware of those instinctual responses. Number two, you are not your thoughts. Now this was a life-changing one for me and let this sink in a little bit. Over time, you're gonna to begin to bring more awareness to the anxious thoughts. And then you're gonna see that they are merely thoughts. And with practice, you're gonna be able to shake them off like water off a duck's back and stop that deep anxious resonance in the body. Number three, you are responsible for the way you feel. This is a big one because a lot of people, including myself, often fall into the victim mode where you feel like life is happening to you and there's nothing that you can do about it. So you're gonna just settle with the way you feel. But responsibility or your ability to respond is within your control. So you have life and there is a trigger, either a thought or something happening in your life. Then you have a space and then you have your reaction or response. Now, over time, you're gonna realize that you have an ability to choose whether you respond to something or react to something. Now, I know I haven't said anything about how we're going to actually start to dissolve anxiety in the body. And that's the point. I went around for so many years trying to do the thing that I was told to do without understanding the fundamentals underneath it. So I wasn't empowered with the tool. So I either quickly lost interest, I didn't understand how it worked 
and as a result, it never became habitual and my life never changed. And the idea is in video one, that you look over the three statements and I'll put everything in the description below and then ask yourself these three questions. Number one, what do I want in my life? And this question blew me away because I realized that I was at the time waiting around for something to happen so I could be happy or at peace. And you have to ask yourself this question. Are you waiting for something to happen so you can feel a certain way, whether it's a job or a raise or a partner or a house or a career? And there's no need to wait around because if you ask enough people, you'll realize that once you get there, that isn't a source of happiness. It can and should come from within. Number two, what are the things or thoughts that bother me? And it's actually good to write these down because we're gonna train ourselves to notice them as we come up. And it might sound simple, but again, often we leave these thoughts completely unchecked. Over time, we're gonna train ourselves to become sharper and more acute to when they rise. And lastly, what am I doing to cause or prevent them? There are obviously things in our life that we can control and we can't control. And it's really important for us to distinguish the two because often we can find ourselves worrying or being anxious about everything across the board. And over time, we're gonna to learn to control the things that we have control over and accept the things that we don't. And these can be physical or tangible things in our lives. These can be emotions, thoughts from the past, or the future. My advice would be to have a look at the three statements, have a look at the three questions, perhaps journal about them. And if you have any questions, I will honestly, I'll be down below. I feel very, very passionate about anxiety. And I do believe that this framework, if approached correctly, can help you. And if it does give you any hope, there was a point in my life where I had totally accepted that I was gonna be this anxious, scared person for the rest of my life. And I used to walk around thinking that someone was trying to kill me, like this crazy, crazy level of anxiety. And I was just in total acceptance. Like there was, there's nothing I could do to change this. And then I came across this framework and little by little, I started to add small bits of reprieve and moments into my day and eventually stretched to longer periods. And it's only very seldomly or periodically that I do feel very anxious, but and, but most of the time it's because of what I'm doing in my life or what's in my life to cause that. But I do feel far more empowered and it really isn't impossible. It's not easy. It takes a lot of patience and practice, but slowly over time, you'll begin to add more lightness and spaces of stillness in your life. Now I'm gonna end the video here, but before you go, I'm gonna just introduce Pascal or Yamiak in the next little clip. And he's a friend of mine. We went away on the weekend and a part of his song played in the beginning intro. And I thought I'd just add in a nice bit of something soft and soothing at the end of this video. I hope you enjoy. Flesh and bone When nothing more so treat me like flesh and bone We live in our heads We think something left Can save us from our flesh and bone Hold me in your loving arms So embraced for the winter Oh, 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 oh. Teach me what I need to know so I can spot the summer on the horizon We are flesh and bone When nothing more Treat me like flesh and bone we live in 
Cross my gaze in the ocean, even just for a moment, I truly be in the moment. Hold me in your loving arms. So embraced for the winter. Teach me what I need to know, so I can spot the summer on the horizon. Flesh and bone, we're nothing more. So treat me like flesh and bone.